All right. Welcome back to the Rock and Roll Ghost podcast. This week we have actor Penelope Ann Miller, who is starring as Nancy Reagan in the feature film Reagan, uh, due out August 30th with uh, Dennis Quaid set to star as uh, our president Reagan. Uh, Penelope, it's a real pleasure having you today. I'm, I'm hoping you're doing well. Thank you. I am doing well. Um, yeah. And it's nice to be here and nice to meet you. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, I have to admit this is this is a kind of a big one. Me and a friend, when I told a friend of mine that I had booked you, he was like, you know, he was very happy because we're both such good, you know, huge fans of yours. Oh, I really appreciate that. So yeah. thank you. All right. Well, let 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 me. I'll get into some other things, but I'd like to talk about uh, Reagan first. Yeah. Um, how did you first get involved and? In, what were your initial thoughts on playing someone that everyone knows? Yeah, well, my initial thought was fear. Um, <laughs> I, I, I actually it was combination. I think it was it was exciting and scary. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she's Nancy Reagan is iconic, and when you're playing somebody that's historical and iconic, and most people know uh or at least unless you're really young i guess but mm -hmm. um but you know, she's famous and she's well known and she's part of our history and people obviously um are going to make the comparisons and then can am i up for the task can i embody her essence and her persona and somewhat look like her and all this stuff so um but i was excited for the challenge and as an as an artist that to me excites me. I love to challenge myself and I love to, to show diversity in my work and show that I'm able to transform. And that's part of the fun part about being an actress um, or an actor is, is to be able to embody all these different characters and that people may not see you that way. And then suddenly they're like, Oh, she can do that. Yeah. So I, I just embarked on an enormous amount of research and, um, but I knew the director, Sean McNamara. I had done a movie with him that nobody saw called Robo Sapien about a little robot. We filmed it in New Orleans. And uh, years ago, uh, my second daughter wasn't even born. But anyway, we had a great relationship and, mm -hmm. and had a lot of fun on the film. Um, and I heard about this movie through some mutual people I knew and uh, heard they were making it. And then I heard Sean was attached to direct it. And so I mentioned it to my my manager, who then reached out to Sean's agents to say, you know, would you consider Penelope for the? And I heard Dennis was attached, so that's mm -hmm. sort of how it sort of started. So I kind of put the feelers out, and then Sean thought it was a great idea, and then I met with Sean and the producer, um, and then uh, and then they ran it by Dennis, and Dennis had been a fan, and and so the rest is history. So. Yeah. I got the role, but I, I embarked on an enormous amount of research. I had to, um, I read about six books, possibly, um, her own biography, autobiography called it's my turn, yes. <laughs> which was my Bible. And, um, and then of course, a lot of interviews and then talking to people that knew her and worked with her. So that was kind of the, the history about how it, how it all began. Um, mm. and Three week, three wigs later, and <laughs> getting the outfits right and the look right, and um, just really capturing her essence. I didn't want to do an imitation kind of where I was like playing a characterization. I just wanted to capture her, her essence essentially. So I think if people sense that, they almost can buy. Maybe I don't look exactly like her, et cetera, et cetera. But I hope I did her justice. I figure I have. I owe it to her legacy. Uh, no matter what, you know, political aisle you're on, I don't think it matters. It's like, that's what we do as artists. We play all different characters and, mm -hmm. um, and that, and that I, I feel like I, I owe it to her to, to do her justice. She was a person who existed in this world and is well known. So I hope I, hope we did a good job. Did you meet with anybody that was close to her, uh, to, to talk about her or was the tr there's basically a treasure trove of information and sure. out there and video and everything so it's not not she wasn't she was definitely in the spotlight more than a lot of first ladies at at that time were yeah well and because of her special relationship with ronnie or ronald reagan uh she called ronnie um 
They were so tight. Um, I mean, even her daughter said they were two halves of a circle. And the hard part is not a lot of people could penetrate that circle. Um, but I think he so trusted her. And it wasn't like she was, you know, and there was rumors she was running the show, which she absolutely wasn't. But they had this bond and this trust and he would talk to her about stuff. And she she kind of had to be I mean, look, they both were actors, so they weren't in the political like world. So they kind of had to, like, learn while doing it. And mm -hmm. um, and she just I think she was just incredibly devoted and protective and wanting him to do well and believed in him. And he just trusted her implicitly. So. Uh, she was just a, there was just really no Ron, Ronnie without Nancy. And everybody right. says that he probably wouldn't have been governor. He wouldn't have been president if it wasn't for her. And she was there to support him. And, um, and I think that's why she was so much more in the forefront is because he also really loved her and appreciated her. And so he really, he also wanted her to be seen and be there and be part of his world. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's why, yeah, she's probably one of the better known first ladies. She wasn't, she wasn't as much in the background as some of them. Yeah. Um, which, which, which can work for you or against you. I mean, she was kind of vilified yeah. as a first lady at the time. And, you know, people said she was manipulative or a dragon lady. And, and, you know, it's interesting when a man's behind a woman, she's considered manipulative and devious or, uh, you know, the puppet master or whatever. And yeah. with a man behind a man, it's a strategist. So it's just interesting the way it's viewed. Yeah. Um, and I think because she was strong and powerful and had opinions and very protective, she may have been misperceived and misunderstood. Yeah. I feel, from what yeah. I've read. No, that, I mean, that, that could very well be, I, I personally, my, I mean, I, I don't really have a whole lot past uh, the just say no. Uh, yes. campaign which and there was that I, I have to admit i mean i just you know as somebody that didn't really ever do anything i still thought well this is never gonna work <laughs> i just well, it was a well, nice well. it was a nice effort but it, oh the it, just it, say no yeah i just like i just you know i i think the cat was out of the bag by that point and it also yeah. it, it, and being somebody that does know you know knows about history and politics it what we ended up finding out about the administration with you know drugs and and Colombia and then the just say no it just seemed like it was you know kind of hypocritical in my opinion but you know that's politics I guess yeah well look she tried and she did the best she could in terms of that and whether it worked or not um yeah. you know at least she was she was making the attempt to get Kids no, I know. I'm I'm just thinking of the uh, smart ass, you know, 15. Yeah, well, there are always those that, cynical you know. ones. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so we're prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but I, I, I think there's still room to get to know somebody in, in absolutely. this case. Absolutely. Look, that, I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know a lot about her either. And, and you know, I, uh, the way I grew up too was a very different uh, background than, than what their politics were. And, um, and I didn't think it was as divided then people could actually talk to each other mm -hmm. um, as it is now. But um, I think there was a lot I did end up really admiring about her and what she went through and um, and knowing that because being in the public eye like that, she was going to get, you know, the magnifying glass and right. be attacked. And and I think she suffered quietly. I mean, mm -hmm. when you read her book, um, you see that that she said she cried a lot of the eight years that she was there because she didn't she was she you know she was attacked a lot um and criticized and that's part of the job i guess um but i i i have to say the people that i did speak to and i know that was one of your questions sheila tate was her press secretary and um she really admired her and respected her and they had a wonderful relationship and then she wrote a book called lady in red which is great i spoke to her quite a bit um, you know, so the, a lot of people that I spoke to in, in her circles, uh, nobody really did say negative things about her. So that's mm. to me a testament to who she was as either a boss or uh, uh, somebody that was working under her. Um, I, I feel like they really admired and respect her. And that to me says a lot.
Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get that. And I, I think your, your point about uh, her being more of a presence in uh, the, the, not so much the administration, but as his confidant That's and right. all that, I think just that, you know, let's be honest, sexism isn't anything new and it certainly wasn't no. like that then. So. Yeah, no, exactly. And um, I mean, it's still, you know, the misogyny still exists and being marginalized because you're a woman and um, she had all that. She had to grapple with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, it's nothing new. <laughs> right. What, um, what was the most surprising thing that you found either about her or about your performance in the film? Um, I didn't, you know, you kind of, when you, my image of her, and I'm sure a lot of people are, is that she was kind of cold, aloof, maybe not that friendly. Mm -hmm. And when I did speak to people and when I read about her and when I found out more about her, she actually had a great sense of humor. I mean, Ronald Reagan was pretty dang funny mm -hmm. and he was always making jokes and telling jokes. And so he was very charming and they called him the great communicator and all of that. But she had that side too. I think she just didn't show it. And I think that was more of a protective uh, mechanism for her mm -hmm. um, of, of not showing that side of her. Maybe she was afraid that it would make her not appear um, as important or as strong or, um, maybe too vulnerable um but there there was that side and then their love story i didn't realize how great their love story was mm -hmm. i i when i found out about um how that happened and how it grew and how he wrote her love notes almost every day and she wrote a published a book called i love you ronnie of all of his love notes from when they're from their courtship throughout mm -hmm. their marriage um i was really blown away by that by their love story. It's pretty incredible. Um, you don't see a lot of marriages or partnerships like that, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, from what I've gathered in my, mm -hmm. my years, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, he was very romantic and very sentimental and, um, you know, they had a really cute relationship. So yeah. I appreciated that. So that was kind of, I guess, one of the, the surprises, um, and that she was, a very compassionate woman and was stayed very loyal to the people that she had worked with who were no longer working with her. She stayed really close with them. And another person who worked in the administration, Mark Weinberg, he stayed close to her. Also their humble beginnings that they, they never had money. They were around a lot of wealthy people, but they were, I mean, even in the white house, like you, you're getting, you get a stipend, like you have to pay for your food and yeah. stuff like that. Other than when you're hosting like a big, right. you know, event but um i didn't realize all of that and they lived in kind of modest homes and then he worked for ge before you know as you know before he became governor um because it's the sag he was the sag president mm -hmm. but he was um and he was you know as you know he started out as a democrat as well yeah um so i think um he you know they really had to work a bit too because even his acting career was kind of he was struggling after his marriage with jane wyman fell apart and he was getting more politically involved with the union and and then it kept going from there yeah. but i didn't realize that they lived so sort of humbly i kind of even their ranch have you been to their ranch the reagan ranch no out in santa barbara i mean it's teeny yeah it's so modest like you cannot believe these weren't they weren't really extravagant people i mean she wore designer clothes she was a fashion icon mm -hmm. but she uh so they presented themselves like that but they weren't like that i mean he worked he built all the fencing on that ranch i mean it was kind of impressive yeah yeah no, it's there's uh, there's a lot there's a lot about the you know about them i didn't know about at the time that you know i i found out over the years um before I forget, what was uh, working with Dennis like uh, as your main co-star? Uh, it was it was great. I mean, it was lucky that we got along so well and um, had a great rapport because being the couple that Ronnie and Nancy were, mm -hmm. we had to have chemistry and you can't you can't fake chemistry. It has to just be there or not there. And luckily, Dennis and I. Uh, got on extremely well. I think we really understood that this relationship was was so important 
uh, to the movie and to the story and to their lives. And, um, and we had a real playful banter. I mean, he called her Nancy pants. We found all these Nick's names that he called her and we incorporated things like that in the movie. And, um, and, and, you know, to this day, he still calls me Nancy pants. So we had a very playful, fun, um, mutual respect uh, when we worked together and I think similar quality in how we worked. And, um, so I was, I was very grateful that, that, that I, I think the chemistry really works in mm -hmm. this, um, and that relationship really works in the film. And I think it's thanks to probably the relationship that Dennis and I had or have. Yeah. Well, it's great. Oh, excellent. Um, you know, one of the, because I, I, my first time seeing you anything was Adventures in Babysitting, I'm pretty sure. That was like my first movie. Yeah. And you I mean, know me and, from way back when. Yeah, yeah. So, and that used to play, when it was on cable, it used to play on a loop in my house because my brother and sister absolutely, I mean, I liked it too. Uh, I, I had a stream crush on Elizabeth Shue at the time. Uh, okay, sure. Why not? Yeah. And, and, and I had one on you later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I played the nerdy best yeah. friend Brenda yeah. so I really wasn't the looker in that movie no but in you fact, yes, you could not be attractive the, well it's okay <laughs> I don't mind it was fine um I auditioned for the Elizabeth Shue role first yeah. and they already had her in mind she'd already auditioned for Chris Columbus so I think they were thinking of her uh -huh. for the lead and so I knew there was the best friend role which was the same age and I thought well can I audition for her too yeah. And so I basically had to, um, when I went back in to prove that I could play the character actors, I put glasses on, I made my hair all sort of stringy and, and greasy. And then I wore an overman size, uh, man's shirt and sweatpants. I mean, I just looked, I made myself look, you know, not as much of the, the ingenue, let's put it that yeah. way. So uh -huh. I wanted to be the character best friend and I won the role. So that was that was lucky for me yeah because that movie did really well nobody expected it to but mm. it became a runway hit yeah that was the box office got better yeah 87 yeah 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 way yeah. back when i know but it's still, well, people still talk about it i think it has a real cult following yeah well it probably helps i i think uh even though columbus had a few more bigger movies after that um well, that was it, his first so it was yeah but it helps that map. it i think it that helps you know the fact that he made these huge movies that you know that they kind of keeps getting because people watch well if you watch this you like this or something maybe it gets thrown in and then people it just kind of gets picked up for a new generation yeah yeah it's um it's funny how people still talk about it today how much they love that movie um, and I was just saying it got the box office like just kept building. It kept getting higher, like every weekend it kept going up, which is also yeah. really unusual because I think the word of mouth, um, because nobody knew we were all newcomers, including mm -hmm. Chris Columbus. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Elizabeth was in Karate Kid, but I mean, uh, yeah, that's she, true. she ended yeah. up making it into the second one. So. <laughs> well none of us did did we no. <laughs> i don't think it was tall who was the oh i was thinking of kindergarten cop they did it no 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 i meant uh, yeah correct no yeah. i know what you meant i yeah, was yeah. about to say somebody else but i think it wasn't even anybody from the original cast right yeah there was at one yeah there was like the third or fourth or fifth i don't know okay there was some one that didn't make any you know didn't have anything uh it's kind of like leonard skinner now uh, <laughs> but uh one of my favorite movies of yours uh well i have two in particular but was the freshman oh wow yeah and that Fine. was that was at that point a kind of a, a different character for you because you were kind of like the nice girl you know not that she wasn't a nice girl but no you know, but she, she was, was sassy yeah. she had a little bit of an edge yeah yeah and also i mean you look at me i'm pretty waspy um <laughs> And I was doing Our Town on Broadway, which is a very waspy role. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they cast me as Marlon Brando's daughter, who is an Italian mafia princess from Long Island. Yeah. Nobody would look at me and think that I could do that once again. Hence now the Nancy Reagan of it all. But that was what was really exciting and challenging for me. And I when I went in, luckily I was wearing a wig in the play. 
<laughs> I dyed my hair. I well, I put a rinse in my hair, made it dark. I wore this sort of leather kind of outfit. I talked with a you know Long Island accent and kind of like showed them that I could do it, and uh, you know subtle, but yeah. enough. Um, and and luckily, I'd also worked with Matthew Broderick in Biloxi Blues, which I'd also did in the play, right, right, the movie that Mike Nichols directed. Um, so he and I had a good rapport, and we obviously had chemistry, so that helped. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was so grateful to get that role. And that's one of my favorite movies. Of course, working with Marlon Brando was just like a dream come true. Yeah. And then getting to work again with Matthew and then Bruno Kirby. And then the, the character was so much fun. I love doing comedy. Mm -hmm. I wish I did more, to be honest, because you're mentioning two comedies that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, that's, uh, that's uh, absolutely, I remember I, I hadn't seen it in a long time and I ended up watching it like, two times in, in two days it's a fun I movie that's another it out cult. Again. that's What's another that? cult classic that yeah. people continue to watch yeah yeah, yeah. andrew uh, bergman right yeah yeah he that's made right. some really good comedies uh yeah. they weren't they weren't like huge you know guffaws all the time but they were really smart and character driven which i always liked yeah, yeah. um what what was it like working with uh brando uh, it was, it was incredible. He was so fun and funny and warm and lovely to me and, mm. um, had a great sense of humor as well, which I didn't expect. I mean, you sort of think of him as this brooding, reclusive, um, eccentric, <laughs> which he's eccentric. No, um, no. but he, he loved it. He had a great time. He was spoofing himself from the Godfather, as you know. Yeah. And I think he just got such a kick out of it and um, really, I think, enjoyed doing a comedy as well. And he wasn't acting that much in his career at that time. So there was always this fear he wasn't going to show up. But <laughs> yes. I thought, you know, I'm going to take my chances. Um, and when he showed up on the, we were on, we filmed some, they filmed some of it in New York and then the rest of it in Toronto. And uh, when he showed up for rehearsals, um, it, he was like an hour late and we were all just going stir crazy. We were at Andrew Bergman's um, apartment or condo that he, that he was staying in at the time. And he walked in the door and he was wearing a powder blue velour jumpsuit. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is not the image that I have of this guy. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, this is no streetcar, you know, the, yeah. you know biker jacket or the rolled up t-shirt or whatever but um he was he just gave me a big bear hug and he's like you're my daughter you know <laughs> but he was like that the rest of the movie and he loved hanging he loved artists he loved actors he'd invite us into his trailer he talked to us about acting he one night i was at dinner with matthew and bruno at a at a restaurant called orso's which was kind of a fancy restaurant and we feel these pellets getting thrown at our table it was matthew bruno and i and we were sitting at this table and we feel these pellets on the back of our head and we turn around and it's marlon brando throwing bread balls at us and he's sitting with the grips and the electricians i mean he really loved the crew and yeah appreciated them and would take them out to dinners and then he ended up throwing our rap party because at the time, TriStar said we'd run out of money and they couldn't afford the rap party. And he said, yeah. well, the rap party is not for us, the actors. It's for the crew who don't get to celebrate their hard work. And so he threw the rap party and paid for it. And it was black tie. It was at the Gourmet Club. Um, we had fire eaters, magicians, belly dancers. I mean, he went all wow. out. Wow. Yeah. So he was a pretty amazing guy. Yeah. I don't know if I've spoken to someone that's worked with brando before so this could be a very well could be a first um but there were two other actually two other movies um and uh i wanted to talk to you because i know i'm running out of time but uh you filmed well you filmed adventures in babysitting i think somewhat in chicago um it was set in chicago also in toronto I, yeah that was, toronto was some of it a substitute was, some of it, yeah. everything was in toronto for a while yeah um some of it was filmed in chicago some of the main exteriors but primarily we were in we were in toronto, toronto. But yeah but it's from chicago i believe so i think that was why yeah, it was kind of yeah that's not surprising but... either yeah uh but you made uh about a decade later you made the relic here <laughs> Uh, in Chicago with Tom Sizemore. And 
you know, it's kind of a, it's a, it, I enjoyed the movie, but, and I haven't seen it since, but it's, it's, you know, it does its job. Well, it's a, it's kind of a, yeah, you know, it was scary. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it did, costume. it did well too. It, I remember it debuted at number one. Yeah. Yeah. It did really well. Um, Gail Ann Hurd was our producer. Okay. Um, Peter Himes was the director. Gail mm -hmm. Scrag worked to Gail a few times. Um, but it was, um, yeah, it was, you know, to do a, I don't think I've ever done like a sci-fi horror movie before. So that yeah. was the first for me playing a scientist <laughs> was the first, yeah. but we did film a lot of it in Chicago and I really enjoyed that city and we got to film in the museum and then right. tours of the back of the museum, um, the place where most of it, all the research is done. And that was quite uh, fascinating and interesting. Um, and we did have sets that we, we filmed out in LA, but um, at Paramount. So, um, but yeah, that was a big deal. That was a yeah. big role for me and the movie did well. So that was good. Well, I went, the reason why I brought it up is I wanted to, I, I um, got to know Tom Sizemore pretty well. Um, oh. And I was pretty upset when he, he passed. Um, but what was your experience like working with him? I know that that might have been a difficult time for him. So I'm just interested. Yeah, I think to... he was going through a lot then. Um, I mean, we luckily got along really well and nothing affected me, but I think he was going through stuff then. And yeah. um, and I think he was up and down. And but But by and large, as far as like the work environment and us working and doing our job, I mean, that and getting along, we, you know, we, we got along, but I think, you know, he had obviously a lot of drug problems, um, yeah. just sad. And, um, you know, um, he's, he had a lot of struggles, yeah. but he did, you know, he did well in the film and, um, and his, his now ex-wife is one of my best friends. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. Maeve Quinlan. She's an actress. Okay. Um, which so, which I, I know he's married more than once um which which marriage was that it was her name's Maeve um it was then he met her he was that was his girlfriend at the time oh okay so it was probably the friend. first and they married right after the movie yeah gotcha yeah yeah they were that that did not end well no uh, <laughs> yeah. well you probably know more than I do then yeah I do <laughs> I don't divulge everything I know no no but, no yeah. I'm not asking you to I'm just saying I now that I'm catching up to speed here i'm realizing you do know more about it than, than i do um well the last one i want to ask about and it, it's it, it i still remember going to the theater to see this um and because the, the theater is amazing uh it was this big old you know palace kind of thing with a curved screen and red red reclining chairs which was years before anything but uh carlito's way oh wow um, what theater which, was that uh, it was out in uh, out in the suburbs of Chicago. Amazing. It, yeah, the place is no longer. I mean, I live out this way now, and the place they raised the whole thing. It was one of the most beautiful cinemas I'd ever been. But it also makes me always remember Carlito's Way, and that had to be a big moment for you too to work work with Al. Oh my gosh! Yeah, um, you know, and Sean Penn, both of them, um, I admired so much as actors and. And then Brian De Palma, um, the whole package was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, even Viggo Mortensen had a smaller role in it. There were so many great actors in that movie. Yeah. Um, but that role was something, once again, that I don't think people would initially think of me for. And originally, when I actually read for it, I read for uh, the producer, Marty Bregman. I got to get them because there's Andrew Bergman and, Bergman and, and Marty Bregman. Marty Bregman, yeah. Marty Bregman and Brian De Palma. And when I first auditioned, they thought, you know, I did a really great job, but that I was maybe too, too nice or too much of a good girl to play this woman who mm -hmm. was a dancer slash stripper. Yeah. And, um, you know, had a, a little bit of an edge too. And Luckily, Al Pacino had seen me in a movie called Other People's Money mm. and really loved me from that. And because yeah. the callbacks were read auditions with him. And I think when he saw my name or had seen that my name had been there, he requested and asked that I be able to read with him, which yeah. I was over the moon because first I got sort of rejected and then I was brought back suddenly. So that was a lucky break for me. And thanks to Al, I 
owe a lot to him to have me back because I think once we read together, it just, everything changed. And yeah. that happens a lot when you get to read with an actor opposite them, you know, they're, they're going to raise the level of your game. And, um, and then we had chemistry and all that, which was very important, but I had to go through a whole rig and roll. I mean, I had like screen tests, they flew me to New York. I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, I had to dance, I had to do, I had to do a lot, but I got the role and it yeah. was, to me, one of my favorite roles I've played, and Freshman's another one. And um, I just, I was nominated for a Golden Glow. I mean, it, it it really put me on a map in a certain way of people considering me in in a different way. And and it was a great role. I mean, um, it just had a lot of depth and, and it was emotional and it was, um, you know, the relationship between between Al and I was that whole storyline was great. And yeah. I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled to be a part of it. Um, yeah. And to this day, I think it's another one that I think it's a kind of a cult has a cult following for sure. Yeah. It, it got, a, uh, I guess I think arrow put out a uh, collector's edition that I really want to get uh, of it. I've got it on probably DVD and I probably got it on video on yeah, just, too. Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, you know, it's one of those movies I just really love that I, I thought it didn't get the fair shake because it was such an amazing movie and, i agree and you were you were really good in it too i mean thank you, you i really enjoyed, you you were somebody that if i saw you were in a movie i i knew i was going to at least enjoy oh. something about the movie so oh that's so lovely of you to say that means a great deal really yeah. it does yeah I, I, that's why I, you want to go see reagan right right <laughs> reagan coming out august 30th uh, thank you very much for taking the time. I probably could have asked you another, you know, half hours. Worth we'll of have another but... one. We'll do this again. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. All right. Yeah. Well, you have a good rest of your day. Thank Delta you for having Mo, me. Everybody. I appreciate, I appreciate it so much. And um, yeah, go see. I'm very now curious what you're going to think of the, the movie. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. August 30th. August 30th. Sure Labor Day weekend. Played. All right. And you can buy tickets real quickly on reaganmovie.com or reagan.movie and you can I'll include it yeah I'll include, include that it. the link and maybe my publicist can send that to you too yeah okay or the trailer right. or whatever okay all right lovely thank to you so you. much thank you all, all right, right bye bye